Hey, what's up? This is Scott, the Frozen Gamer, with a review. Yes, a review. That's my first one in a long time, due to many reasons, other uh, including that reviews take a long time to produce, especially when I'm the only one doing all the work on them. So, anyways, I'm happy that today's review is going to be Boom Sears Catalog by Taylor Reiner from Taylor's Trick Taking YouTube channel and uh, published by Bezier Games. And this is not about the Sears catalog as in the department store. This is a playoff of that as in Sears catalog as we are referring to Werewolf, which is Bezier Games' bread and butter. But this is not a social deduction game. This is a card shatter. So let's get it to the table and see how it plays. So here's Sears catalog set up for a four player game. Everyone is going to be dealt 12 cards, two artifact cards, which are special powers, and one wild card, uh, which acts as a wild card. You're also gonna get one button to start the game and you want it on the six plus card side to start the round of every game that you play. Since Taylor designed this game, we're gonna do this Taylor style. We have the wolf player, we got Chase, we have the frog and the chicken player. So the object of the game is to have the most points after four rounds of the game. Before you start playing the game, you'll wanna go over all of the different artifact cards that are in the game because you're gonna take two per player and those cards are gonna be the cards that are in for the entire game. So if you just go over them at the beginning of the game, what the powers actually do, then you won't have to go through them every round because they you might have these cards in the first round, but you might have two different cards in the second round and third round and fourth round. So if you just go over them at the beginning of the game, that's great. They also have this artifact rule book, which if you need to look up, if you forgot what they do, you can just simply go through that real quick and look up what the cards do. The object of the game is to not be the first one out of cards, like many shedding games. The first one that's out of cards gets zero points for the round. And that's not bad, but it's not good because it's not positive points. You want to have five cards or less and be in the bonus at the end of the round. Because then when you score at the end of the round, whatever cards is your lowest card that you have left in your hand will give you positive points. Artifact cards and wild cards count as zero. So you want these out of your hand. But let's say I had a, a four was my lowest card. I had four cards in my hand and a four was my lowest card. I'll give four points here but then I have to lose a point for every card that's in my hand, so I'll actually get zero points. If 10 was my lowest card left in my hand, and maybe it was my only card left in my hand, I would get 10 points minus one for nine points that round. If you have six cards or more in your hand at the end of the round, you don't get to take your lowest card for positive points. You just lose however points for each, one point for each card that you have in your hand at the end of the round. So that's not good. You wanna be in your bonus when the game ends, and again, you don't wanna be the first one out though, because then you're gonna get, for sure, zero points. So what cards can you play per round? You can play a single card, boom, a four. I could play a run of cards from the same suit, so here, like a two, three, or four. Or I can play a pair or more of a set. So I could play maybe three twos. Once I decide what I have played, then everyone must follow the same amount of cards of the same type of meld that I just did. So if I did a run, they have to, a three card run, they have to do a three card run that's higher than mine. If they can't do that, they have to pass, or they can pass on their own, and if you pass, you're out for the rest of that hand. So whoever starts the hand is whoever has this go first card. And this counts as a one of any suit. The wolf player might go, I wanna do this one, two, three, four run. So they play that out in the middle of the table. And then we look at Chase, they don't have a four card run, so they pass. But then we look at Frog here, and they have a four card run. It happens to be the same suit that Wolf played. It doesn't need to be. It just needs to be four of, this, of the same suit. So they're gonna play a six, seven, eight, nine. They have now taken the lead of this trick. So Chicken has a six, seven, eight, nine, two. They currently can't play that four card run because it matches what Frog played, six, seven, eight, nine. It doesn't beat it, it doesn't have a 10 at the end. So what they're gonna do instead is they're gonna take the seven, eight, nine, which doesn't count because it's only three cards, they have to play a four card run, but they're gonna add the wild card to it. So it's now a seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So that's leading this trick. If you look back here, nothing that, that Wolf can do. Chase is already out. So we look at Frog. They have nothing they can do, so they pass as well. And Chicken wins the trick. 
and these just go out of the game. Since chicken won the last trick, they're going to start and lead the next hand. So they look at their hand. There's not anything great that they can play, but they have this three in their hand that they really want to get rid of. So they're going to play this three here, but they're also going to pair it with this artifact card, which is a penalty card. And it says negative two. The winner of this trick keeps this card and scores negative two onto their score for the round. And this little plus sign means that you have to play it with another card. So they're going to play it here and maybe they play a four. The wolf plays a four. And people are just trying to get rid of some bad cards out of their hand. Chase plays a five. Frog goes up and plays a nine here. And they're gonna add a card with theirs, an artifact card. They're gonna lead the next trick. No matter if they win or lose this, they're gonna lead the next trick. So now it's a nine. And maybe for whatever reason, uh, they pass. So the highest card's a nine. And they pass. They don't wanna play any higher, even though they have higher cards. So they're out for the round. And they might say, well, yeah, I'm out for the round two. And they go, well, maybe I will just play this 11 here. And then Frog passes. So Chase wins the trick. He has to take this negative two artifact into his hand for endgame scoring. And Frog, since they played this, gets to lead the trick instead of Chase. So let's say we're later in the, the game and Frog just won a trick and is down to five cards now. They no longer have six plus cards, so they flip this over. They're in the bonus, so that's good for scoring. But they cannot pass voluntarily for the rest of the game. So even if they want to pass just because it's more beneficial to them, they do not, they can, are not allowed to pass. They have to play a card that they can, or a meld of cards that they can, um, this round for the rest of the round um, until the round is over. So let's say it's coming down to the end of the round. Chase, Chicken, and Frog are all in the bonus. Wolf is not in the bonus. And Frog wins the trick and it cleared out all the cards of their hand. They didn't want to, but they were forced. They couldn't pass and they had to play and they finished the round off. There's, they have no cards left. The round is now over. Frog automatically gets zero points because they were the one that ended the round. Wolf here has six plus cards left. They never flipped their button. So they count how many cards they have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They get negative eight points. Chase here, they look at their, they are in the bonus. So they look at their lowest card they got, seven here. So they get seven points. Minus three is four points. But remember, they got this negative two penalty earlier in the, the round. So they got two points this round. And Chicken here was left with one card and it's a five, so they get four points this round. At the end of the round, you'll deal out 12 new cards to each person, two of the artifacts to each person. Remember, it's the same artifacts that started the game. You're not adding any new artifacts into the game. And everyone gets their wild card back. You do the same thing for four rounds. Whoever has the most points after four rounds is the winner. If tied, whoever scored most in the last round wins, and if still tied, Whoever grabs the Sears catalog box first wins the game, or you can just call it a tie. Hey, welcome back. So let's talk about my thoughts about Sears catalog. And first I wanna talk about the theme. I just adore this theme so much. It's uh, so cute on the play on words, the Sears catalog again. There's obviously on the box, there's the werewolf hiding in the background. It's a play off of the old Sears catalogs. Um, and they have uh, throughout this picture here alone on the box, there's a lot of the, uh, things that you can buy on the cards in the game. And what you're trying to do, I didn't even mention this when I was uh, talking about the game earlier, what you're trying to do in the game thematically is whittle down, you have this I, all these items from the catalog that you're thinking about buying and you're trying to whittle them down at the end. And you don't want to buy too much of the cards, um, with, that's why you don't want to have six or more cards at the end of the game, but you don't want to be the have zero cards because then you didn't buy anything um, and be the first one out. But you want to have like five or less cards of things that you want to buy. So that's kind of the theme of the game. Does it work? Not 100%, but it, it's cute and it, it's, it's 
for it's nice to have a theme on a card shedding game like this to begin with compared to like classic teach you which i'll bring up a lot i love that game but uh i'll compare this game to that quite a bit even though i don't love doing comparisons and reviews but i think it, it's kind of warranted as well um so the theme's really cute in the game on the cards every card has a little thing on it as well so this is like the electric doorbell and then it has little uh little flavor text on the bottom it says perfectly sized for werewolf claws the voting sign can't vote uh, can't find them if you don't vote for them because in Werewolf you do lots of voting. Uh, the Thriller jacket um, is one of the things you can buy. Blue hair dye because in uh, Bezier's version of Werewolf, Ultimate Werewolf, and all the other spinoffs that he's done of Werewolf, um, the seer always has blue hair. Seer Up, I love the flavor text on this one, not to be confused with Seer A uh, Mist. And then seared steak. Sure, it's a villager, but it still gives werewolves indigest indigestion, which it's just cute, funny stuff like this. Uh, there is a whole nother suit. If you play with a five-player game, you add a fifth suit to the game, which is all silver. It's the silver suit, and it's everything is related about like silver bullets and stuff as well. So the theme is just super cute in the game. I love it. The components are nice. They're nice uh, linen cards, linen finished cards in the game, and. Then it's just these tokens, and that's it. It's cards and these tokens. A nice add, though, is this appendix to the rule book, which has all of the artifacts on it again, uh, so you can read up on them in case you forget what they are once you explain them at the beginning of the game. And then it has this nice little guide on the back as well. So you can see that there. What do I like about the actual play of the game? Because that's the most important thing, right? Well, I think this is a great card shedding trick taking game. It's not straight up card shedding like some games like the old fashioned president that you just play with a deck of cards where you're just trying to get rid of your cards the fastest. Again, you don't even want to be the one that gets rid of your cards the fastest in this game. I like that the rules are fairly simple in this game compared to Teach You. I, there's my comparison. Teach You is a great shedding trick taking game, but the rules can be complex for players that don't play. I've tried to teach it to, um, that don't play board games regularly. I tried to teach it to uh, some family and some friends that don't play board games. And there's some things that I find convoluted in the game that I didn't at first, but once I tried teaching it to non-gamers, that was convoluted. Uh, and they just didn't understand scoring. They didn't understand bombs. They didn't understand calling teach you. You don't have to do anything in this game. Uh, this game is so simple that you're either gonna play a single card like that, you're playing a pair of cards of like two eights, or you're playing um, a run of cards of two, and the run can simply be like a nine ten. That could be your run that you play. Um, or it can be a four card run or a five card run, all of the same suit. Uh, that's all you're gonna play. You're not gonna play like ladders or stairs or whatever you wanna call them, where it's like two fours, two fives, two sixes. You're not gonna play full houses unless you have an artifact card that allows you to play those, which there is one in the game that does allow you to play those uh, types of melds to the trick. Uh, so it's really simple. It's single card pair or sets or pairs, pair sets, um, whatever you want to call them, or runs. And that run can start with two cards. So easy, so easy for anyone to pick up. Uh, then the other thing I love about the game is once you hit this bonus, that is so cool that you can no longer pass anymore if you don't have to. If you have to pass, you can pass. But if you don't have to pass, you have to play your cards. And you have to use your artifact if, you, if that helps you play your cards. Um, and I think that's cool because it makes you get down to that zero cards faster. And it's like, oh no, do I, should have I passed earlier in the game so I didn't have to get down to the zero cards right away here now because now I can't pass anymore. It just makes things interesting in the game. Uh, that now you can't pass anymore and it makes it so you can't play the most optimum way that you wanted to, but it still makes the game fun. It's not like forcing you to do something that is just horrible. Um, it just makes the game fun and it gets you down to that zero quicker, um, zero cards quicker. And for scoring it, I like the way that if you have the six plus, you're just getting negative points. If you're in that bonus, hey, you get a bonus at the end of the game. You get to get your lowest uh card that you have and score that as positive points. It's the only way to get positive points in this game. So games of Sears catalog can be a lot of people ending in negative points at the end of the game. I love that once you deal out the penalty, the, the artifact cards, the first one here says penalty, that's why I said it. But once you deal out the artifact cards at the beginning of the game, those are gonna be the only artifact cards that are in the entire game. You aren't constantly shuffling in new artifact cards, which seems like, oh, I wanna play with more powers in the game. But 
<laughs> it makes things so much simpler not having to constantly adding new powers every round of the game because you don't have to look them up and take the time to explain them to everyone or have passing this around constantly trying to figure out what the power is that you have um, for this round of the game. And I love that. I think that is great. I think that just makes things simpler and easier and you still get to use these cool powers. And the powers alone are awesome because not a lot of these, this is maybe the only, I'm sure there's other shedding games out there with powers, but it's, this is the only one that I've played. And I've played a handful of shedding games. Um, and this is the only one I've played with powers. And that just makes it fun and interesting and very, and it varies things up. Every time you play the game, you're gonna have new powers in it. Overall, this is just a top notch card shedding, trick taking game. This is one that's gonna be staying in my collection. Taylor has had a lot of uh, great card games coming out this year, a lot of great trick-taking games, and this is this is definitely one of them. Bezier Games has come out with a slew of trick-taking games and card shedding games this year, and this is uh, my favorite of the ones that I've played of theirs that have come out this year. So, uh, yeah, just great game all around. I highly recommend it. Staying in my collection, that's Sears Catalog. Peace, and stay cool.